Good day, liberators. Next week, between the 25th and the 27th of September 2024, I have to appear again in the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court facing charges of contempt of court. And why is it important for you to, uh, to, to know this and, and to support us in challenging this? Is that it has got a direct bearing on the COVID-19 lockdown and the fact that we have succeeded in declaring the COVID-19 lockdown uh, regulations way back in, on the 2nd of June 2020. We've obtained a high court order to declare it as, uh, as, as, as constitutionally invalid. But as you know, that irrespective of us obtaining that court order, the uh, government continued with the lockdown for another two years. And, um, but according to, to us, it was uh, actually the entire lockdown came to an end on the eve of the 23rd of June 2020, coincidentally on my birthday. And, but since then, notwithstanding that there was ample proof and ample arguments that the lockdown ended then already, the government continued. We had to go to the constitution, uh, to, to the um, firstly to the Supreme Court of Appeal to uh, to as a respondents uh, where the government has appealed it. And what happened at the Supreme Court of Appeal is the important thing that our arguments that we have put before court to prove that the lockdown was over and that the government could not have continued with the lockdown at that point in time anymore. All those arguments have been just totally, totally ignored. Um, we know now through the, the magistrate's court proceedings that Mr. Paul Myberg, the registrar at that point in time, never gave very important documentation to the now Chief Justice Mile. She was then the president of the Supreme Court of Appeal. And unfortunately, the fact that he was the one who never gave the most important documentation to the, the to Chief Justice Maya then um, resulted in the proceedings to continue where it should never have continued. And at that point, when we brought an application that the full bench of the Supreme Court of Appeal should have recused themselves because they, they were biased, clearly biased. At that point in time, we never knew that Mr. Paul Myberg was actually responsible for, for that incident. And unfortunately, when the judges, Supreme Court of Appeal judges, continued with the hearing at that point in time, uh, they, in our absence, because we've objected to them being the presiding officers over the case, um, we then subsequently, after the hearing, got this email from, or this letter from Mr. Paul Myberg, uh, apologizing for not giving the documentation to Justice Meyer beforehand, and that, um, no, just apology. And But that was shortly after the, the, the so-called hearing. And then we approached Justice Meyer at that point in time and said, okay, there is no judgment, So, but we want you to to take control over the Supreme Court of Appeal as the president, and you should actually um, tell your judges, your, the five judges, to uh, consider that those proceedings before them did not take place, and that it should be heard in open court, and that we can then go back and argue our case. It was a complaint. It was also a complaint against Mr. Myberg. It was a complaint addressed to her as the head of the court to investigate the judges and Mr. Paul Myberg for what has transpired. Regrettably, Justice Meyer decided not to act and she said that no, she's not going to do any investigation. Uh, she wants us to just wait for the judgment. And um, at that point in time, I was extremely furious, but I also knew that the proceedings that I was busy with a complaint which falls under qualified privilege and then I, I was very angry and I said that the well in that case Mr. 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 Paul Myberg did apologize on behalf of the court but we do not accept the court's virtual apology and, and the Supreme Court of Appeal must just basically stick its apology up its arse. 
Yes, it sounds very, very uh, misplay or it's, uh, it's, it's, it's supposed to, to be not to happen. But the fact that we were totally rolled over, we were bulldozed by not only the, the state, but also the, the judges in that case. According to us, they were clearly biased in our matter for various reasons that we've stated. So Justice Maya just let it go and she said, okay, uh, let, let, let me just forget about this. However, and this also came out in the Bloemfontein proceedings, that Mr. Mayberg went ahead without the permission of Justice Meyer, to whom those communication has been addressed, but he never knew that we were busy with a complaint against him and the, 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 the court, all the five judges sitting in, in that matter. And he then just bypassed Justice Meyer and he, without her authority gave that letter that was meant only for her eyes and gave it to the bench of five judges. So obviously they never had the rest of the documentation, the complaint that was originally addressed, but he just got, as the registrar I managed to, to snip away that one, one letter uh, which had to be read in, in context with, with all the others and the, the total um, powerlessness that we had at that point in time that everyone, we know that the lockdown ended, we know that, that the, the state is wrong and the judges taking the side of, of the state openly, we were just frustrated. So Justice Maya understood that. But, because, and, but unfortunately, Mr. Maiber gave that letter where I said that the apology must be stuck in, in the court's arse. Um, unfortunately, he reached their, their bench and they interpreted in the way that they wanted to. And the court then decided uh, in their judgment, which they have rendered uh, on, I believe, I think on the 1st of July, uh, 2021, They've said that the registrar must send those documentation and the, the judgment to the Director of Public Prosecutions for considering uh, contempt of court uh, proceedings against me. Um, eventually, the, after a year or so, the, the, the Director of uh, Public Prosecutions in Bloemfontein decided uh, that she wanted to prosecute me. So my prosecution relating to that case started in October 2022. And according to directives, issued by Chief Justice Mugwing Mugwing uh, from the past. He indicated that criminal proceedings must be finalized in a magistrate's court uh, within six months after, uh, the, uh, after it, was, well, was, uh, it, it, it started. So I'm already in, in two years. Um, so so it's, it's not within the brackets of the six months. And unfortunately, I had to travel all the time. I think I went to Bloemfontein probably 10, more than 10 times. So I had to travel all the way from Pretoria. I've objected against the fact that, that the incident um, did not take place, according to me, in Bloemfontein. Uh, we've indicated that, uh, that they should have prosecuted me in, in Pretoria. And, uh, but they deliberately and intentionally con uh, continued to charge and prosecute me in Bloemfontein. They wanted to make it as... As, as frustrating and uncomfortable for me as they could. And, um, but we've perse I've, I've persevered and uh, I, I went to, to, uh, to, to, um, um, to Bloemfontein each and every time uh, with my family. I always took my entire family with me, my, my daughters and my wife. My wife went with me to court all the time and supported me and uh, I was, I'm, I'm very much thankful for her of giving, getting, giving me the support necessary. Um, and, and obviously I had to take my children with me because uh, yeah, under the circumstances I don't want to leave them, uh, I want them under my eyes. Um, so um, yes, we've, we've persevered. But the court has now said, uh, the last time that I was there a month ago, that because I've wanted to, I've issued, I requested subpoenas to be issued against Justice Meyer uh, and, and several other judges to come and testify in court. Um, the, the real actual reason behind the, um, the, the, the complaint that I've lodged with, with Justice Maya in particular. Unfortunately, um, yeah, um, Justice Punan, one of the Supreme Court of Appeal judges, intercepted the subpoenas. He said that the magistrate's court doesn't have the authority to issue subpoenas against judges to come testify. And he ensured that everything has been squashed. I was prevented my opportunity last time for the judges to appear so that, uh, as, as my witnesses so that I can cross-examine them as hostile witnesses. And 
uh, to get to the nitty gritty of what actually transpired. Uh, that right has been taken away from me and luckily the magistrate realized that. And he then indicated that when I return now and the judges on there to testify, which they will not be, he's going to continue with a so-called uh, Section 342 inquiry in terms of the uh, Criminal Procedure Act to determine why it's taking so long uh, for my prosecution and that, that I am being prejudiced in the process. So if everything goes well, when I return to, to Bloemfontein next week, I might be very lucky to come back with the case dropped against me. And that would be a, a marvelous win for everyone because the state and the Supreme Court of Appeal combined to prosecute me for having dared to complain against the judges uh, for the fact that we, we believe that they should have recused themselves. So they've pursued this entire uh, witch hunt against me specifically, and they were not successful. I've represented myself. Um, I've, I had to go through this trauma on my own with my wife and my, my, my children. Uh, no support whatsoever in court, um, notwithstanding that the outcome of this, this magistrate's court, yes, it is a magistrate's court, court matter, but the fact is that the outcome thereof would, would, would imply that a man not represented by a member of the legal fraternity, who represented himself facing the state and the court, the judiciary, managed to, to be successful. That is why I am relying on you as our stalwart supporters to please keep on supporting the work of Liberty Fighters Network. We are literally with our hands in the dirt. Uh, I stand at a chance of being committed to, um, to, to, to prison if found guilty. So if, if it does not work out next week that um, the, the, the case must, must be uh, declared as a mistrial, um, I have to, the chances that I'm going to be found guilty is very good because I had to face the entire state, the government of, of, of South Africa and also the entire judiciary. The fact that the judiciary was a complainant the magistrate's court said, but, but, yeah, they could still continue, irrespective of the fact that the, the, the Supreme Court of Appeal was the complainant. Uh, the, the fact that the criminal case was opened against me by the Supreme Court of Appeal is highly irregular in, its, in, its, in the first instance. The court cannot be a complainant. What, what is the court? What type of entity is the court? Can the court be a party in proceedings before itself. No, it cannot. And irrespective of the fact that it's a Supreme Court of Appeal before the Magistrates Court, the Constitution makes it clear that we've got one unified court system. So whether it's a Magistrates Court or whether it's, it's the, the uh, Constitutional Court, a court is a court. Yes, they, they've got certain, certain levels of authority that they've got, but a court order uh, by the Magistrates Court and the Court order by the Constitutional Court has, have exactly the same consequences. It must be adhered to. So I am in the in the uncomfortable position um, to plead to our supporters to please um, su support us. Uh, your donations, your voluntary donations, help us to to constantly go forward constantly fight this fight because it's not over people. The fact that COVID-19 is not around openly anymore and that there's no lockdown does not mean that we had to stop all our court cases that we are busy with concerning the COVID-19 lockdown. We have to finish it. Some of them have been escalated to the African Commission on Human People's Rights. So it's international now. We must uh, get a precedent to prevent further lockdowns to be initiated against us in future. And as you are well aware, there are threats and concerns now that there might be lockdowns coming for the inbox and for whatever the case may be. People are already um, getting uncomfortable about what is going out uh, on out there about them. And it's, it, it's, it will take just uh, one minute that that we, we switch on our radio and, and television and they say, but oh, there's now an uh, outbreak of um, swine flu. Uh, and it's spreading all over. It's a new new variant and it's spreading all over Europe. And uh, it's an example, people. But and, and then within, within days, we could be in a lockdown again and face exactly the same problems we had during the COVID-19 lockdown, if not worse and probably much worse. So if we don't 
put a precedent on the table to fight it and prevent it to be implemented in the way that it was implemented in South Africa. And also, I'm talking about other, other places in the world as well. Uh, we have to fight this. We cannot stop. Uh, I, I was so so um, so frustrated many times to just say that maybe we must just stop and because our work is not appreciated and just just, just go on with my life, get to work again and get part of the rat race again. But unfortunately, I cannot. I cannot stop this. Um, I have to pursue this until the very last end. And at this point in time, with your support, we can do that. Um, Liberty Fighters Network have a lot of expenses, overheads at the end of the day. We want to also get a proper office um, and, and a proper staff complement. We cannot do that with, the, with only the limited resources that we've got. And we are so thankful for each and every one of you. But now um, I need to go to, to Bloemfontein again. And I'm currently in the position that, that our the, the, the current overheads, normal overheads have not even been paid. Um, I haven't paid rent for the month, and yeah, you know, no, it's well. I, I, I've chosen this career, but in, in some way, I was also forced into this because if I did not act for Liberty Fighters Network in 2020, all the positive things that came out of out of what we did and and our part that that we played in there would never have happened. Um, they could have been with the challenges that we initiated. Uh, they, they, they probably could have been a lockdown until now. And so we are confident that, and many experts have, have, have told us this, that if we did not do what we did and obtained court order way back in the beginning of the lockdown, it would have been tickets for the, for the lockdown consequences. And we are feeling the consequences now. People, um, down in, in the description, you will find our banking details for voluntary donations. And please consider what I've said now and uh, put yourself in my position. Um, as an activist, that that someone have to do the dirty work, and and I was probably I feel that I've always said this that I feel that that God has as 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 prepared me and my f family. Uh, we went through racky training training um, uh, for a very long time in very difficult situations that we were before to do what we we are doing now. Thank you very much for your support, and um, I'll, I'll give you feedback on what happened in in Bloemfontein. Um, Thank you very much. God bless. Until the next time. Liberty Fighters Network. Liberty Fighters Network. Liberty Fighters Network.